All right, number 34, give the domain and range for the rational function. Use interval notation. And we have f of x equals 1 over quantity x plus 7 squared. All right, so let's talk about domain. Again, we know that domain uh, means or refers to the permissible values of x. What are the x values that we can use with this particular function? And just like we talked about in number 33, generally speaking, finding the domain is easier than finding the range because with the domain, all we have to do is take the denominator and set it to zero and solve for x because what we're saying is that we may not know what the quantity x plus 7 squared equals. We may not know what this value is, but all we know is that this thing cannot be zero because if this whole expression here, this x plus 7 squared, if this is zero, then that means we have a zero in the denominator and we can't have a zero in the denominator. So what we're gonna do is let's solve for x here and that will help us to find the domain. That will tell us what values of x we cannot have. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And don't forget, when you create your own square root, you have to include plus and minus. But in this particular case, it's not necessary because we're dealing with the square root of zero. And that's really the only time that we wouldn't include that notation plus and minus zero. All right, so here on the left, when we take the square root, we'll have x plus seven equals, and what is the square root of zero? Well, the square root of zero is just zero. And that's why that plus and minus notation isn't necessary because um, anything plus zero, anything minus zero, we're not taking or adding away any value with zero. All right, and last step here, let's subtract seven from both sides. And that tells us that x cannot equal negative seven. And I really should have included a, a slash through that equal sign, cannot equal. All right, so what this is telling us is that x can be any number in the world except negative seven, because if we were to take negative seven, plug it into our original denominator here, we would get a zero, right? Negative seven plus seven is zero, and zero squared is zero, and that would give us one over zero. We can't have that. So writing in interval notation, we know that then the domain is from negative infinity to negative seven, but not including negative seven, union negative seven to positive infinity. So there's our domain. Let's now find the range. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this work here. All right, so range, and again, we know that range refers to the permissible values of y. What are the y values that we are allowed to work with, that we're allowed to use with this function? Well, just like we talked about in number 33, um, you can go ahead and find the range using the calculator graphically, but I like to go ahead and find it analytically first and then confirm on the calculator afterwards. So if we were given originally y equals 1 over quantity x plus 7 squared, let's go ahead and solve for x in our given equation here. And just notice the only thing I changed was I went from function notation to y. That was the only thing I changed, right? So if we're solving for x, if we want to get x all by itself, then first thing we're going to do is let's multiply by that x plus 7 squared on both sides. All right, here on the right-hand side, those two expressions cancel, and we're left with, on the left-hand side, y times quantity x plus 7 squared equals 1. We want to get x all by itself, so first thing we can do is let's divide by y on both sides. That leaves us with x plus 7, that quantity squared, equals 1 over y. Again, we're trying to get x all by itself, so let's go ahead, take the square root of both sides. Now in this case, we will do plus and minus. All right, I'll finish over on the right-hand side here. So when we take the square root of the left-hand side, we're gonna have x plus seven. When we take the square root of the right-hand side, we'll have plus and minus radical one over y. And lastly, to get x all by itself, we'll subtract seven from both sides. And that leaves us x equals plus and minus radical 1 over y minus 7. And just take note uh, that that minus 7 uh, is not under the radical. All right, so now that we have x all by itself, we need to find out what are the permissible values of y based on this right-hand side. 
And I'm going to zero in. I'm going to look at just what's under the radical sign first. All right, this expression, this 1 over y. All right, if I gave you 1 over y and asked you what are the only values of y that we cannot use here in this expression, this 1 over y, you would tell me the only thing that we cannot use is 0, right? And you'd be correct. We cannot have a 0 in the denominator that gives us something that's undefined. We don't want that. All right, so we know we can't have uh, y being 0. But because this expression, this 1 over y, is under the radical, what else can't y be? And this one takes a little bit of uh, uh, extra, maybe um, uh, uh, for, uh, some foresight to see what we're talking about here. Because remember, we can't have a specific value under the radical. And we can't have a negative under the radical. All right, so if we have 1, which is positive, divided by any negative, that will give us a negative under the radical. So we know that y cannot be 0 and y cannot be negative, right? Because if y was negative, let's say that y was negative 2, for example, well, then we'd have 1 divided by negative 2, which is negative 1 half. We cannot have a negative under the radical, right? Otherwise, we start dealing with imaginary numbers. All right, so we can't have a negative uh, for y, and y can't be 0. So what that means is that y has to be greater than 0. And y greater than 0, well, that includes both of these, um, both of these uh, um, terms, right? Or, uh, meaning that y can't be 0, and it can't be negative. And so based on this, then, y is greater than 0, we can write the, dom uh, the range, rather, and say that the range is from 0 to infinity. So we're saying the range is from 0, but not including 0, up to infinity. And this uh, precludes y, the range, from being negative. And it's also saying, based on the use of parentheses here, that we're not including 0 uh, as part of the range. But let's go ahead and use our calculator to confirm that. So we'll go back to our y equals screen. We'll put in 1 divided by, and we're going to say uh, x plus 7, that quantity squared. And we'll take a look at the graph we have here. And we can see, based on the graph that we're given, notice this graph doesn't exist anywhere below y equals 0, right? So this graph only exists for y values that are uh, bigger than, larger than 0. And that's how we got uh, our range here. And then, of course, we can see that the domain is from negative infinity way out here up to negative 7. There's an asymptote there. So it can not exist at negative 7. And then it picks back up at negative 7 and goes out towards positive infinity.